Hi, today we're going to look at the Anti-Fraud Start Kit. Let's start by clicking on Design Schema to take a look at the graph model for this Start Kit. In this use case, we have four types of vertices. Users, Payment Instrument, which could be something like a credit card or a phone. Device Token, which is a unique ID number for the particular device used to make the payment. And the transaction itself. You see there are two types of relationships or edges between users and transactions. A user can receive or a user can transfer a transaction. And then from user to user there is user refers another user. And then of course there is one type of link between users and payment instrument and user and device token. Now let's take a look at the queries. This is the query panel we have seven built-in queries for the anti-fraud case. And let's click on the first one and we see invited user behavior. Invited, remember we have the user to user referral relationship. In this use case, a user can invite another user to join the network and receive a bonus for doing so. The type of fraud we're looking for is has a user created a lot of fraudulent fake user accounts just to collect the referral bonus? So we want to look at, uh, given a certain input user, look at the network of referred users around that person. So we'll, we uh, click the uh, Run Query button at the top, the little triangle, and we enter in a user ID, a vertex ID. And this will search for the other users that this user has invited and what kind of payments they've made. So there is our user 2163. He has invited two others and then they have invited some others. So you see we're, we're taking this to a, a depth of a couple different users. And that is what this one does. So this little button can be used there to uh, grow or shrink the screen. This is the multi-transaction query. This is one of our more complex queries. So the input for this one is a transaction. And every transaction, of course, has a sender and a receiver. So we were first going to assemble a network around each of those two persons. The sender network is persons who have uh, related to the sender through either a uh, device token or through a payment instrument up to a certain depth and then we do a similar thing for the receiver person find a uh, network of connected persons and then now that we have these two networks we look for transactions from one network to the other so that is called the multi-transaction query so all we have to do is enter in a starting vertex ID. So let's throw in some value. And this is interesting. There are two separate networks here. I, I can't tell which is sender and which is receiver without zooming in. But I can tell that they are separated. So there are no other transactions between the two networks. So let's try another one. Uh, that was pretty unusual. Okay, so in this case, I do see two additional transactions. Uh, besides the query transaction, there are two others uh, between the sender group and the receiver group. Uh, and you can see the uh, attributes of the transactions when you have the cursor over the transaction. And, and if you have a large enough network, that's, that's fairly normal. Okay, the third query we have here is repeated user. The input for this one is a receiving user, and we're looking to see if several persons have sent money to this receiver and if those senders are somehow connected to one another. So we'll enter in an ID. That's a pretty small network there. Let's try another one. Okay, oh, this is interesting. So you see four connections, four transactions around that receiver, and there definitely are some connections from sender to sender. But look how long those paths are. 
uh, one of the great powers of the Tiger Graph platform is its ability to search these really deep networks. So there could be, uh, looks like eight or 10 uh, links to get from those related persons. Now it could be that's so long that's, that's not really a meaningful relationship. It's almost just a random connection, but uh, we can at least find it. So the fourth query is the same receiver sender query. In this case, the input is a transaction. And again, we're looking to see if there is a connection between sender and receiver other than the transaction. So we see there is one that that blue link at top is, is a connection. So now we're going to look at the transferred amount query. This query starts from a sender person and looks for other persons connected through paths uh, of either payment instruments or through device tokens and uh, these other persons can be up to a distance of four, a path of length four through these um, connections and those are the receiving persons and then we look at the payments the, the payments from the sender to the receivers and how much was sent um, so we can enter in a starting uh, ID and we all can specify a date range notice and this is our network there seem to be about uh, six or seven connection points coming out of that sender um, leading to red receivers and green transactions so each of those transactions um, was from sender to uh, one of those receivers so let's try another input and you see you get a different network and let's try one more and yet a different network. And if over on the left we can switch to text output and then we can see the amount of the transaction. We're going to look now at the circle detection query. So this query starts from a user and looks for transaction paths that go out and then return back to that same user. So for example, a user sends some money to another user uh, from A to B and then B goes to send some money to C and eventually there's a path that leads it way back to A, a circular path. Um, and we can set uh, minimum and maximum lengths for these paths. Uh, we've got a minimum there of three and a maximum of six. And those are adjustable. So let's put in some random ID and run our query and see what we get. Oh, that's impressive. That's a pretty large network there. So you can see from the uh, red user in the center, we have green transactions leading to red users and leading to and others and eventually making their way back. So with such a large network, that's either a close-knit friendly group or a possibly fraudulent group. And last, we have the fraud connectivity query. In this case, we're going to make use of the trust scores. We haven't looked at that before, but each app, each um, vertex has a fraud score connected with it, and we can calculate fraud scores across the network. And we see a very big network this time. So from this user, we set a threshold fraud value and we look to see which events around that user um, through, through transactions, through uh, payment instruments and, and through devices, um, which ones have a low, relatively low trust value. It's below the threshold. So that is the anti-fraud start kit. Uh, I hope you learned something and I hope you're 
interested in giving it a try yourself. Thank you.